we make the strings. <laughs> What's up guys? So uh, before we start today's video, I would like to announce that today is the first day to uh, get your entries in for our 2017 Subaru WRX giveaway. This is Project Build giveaway number three. This is the fourth giveaway we've actually done. 2017 WRX, it is all stock right now, uh, other than some tinted windows, but we're planning on doing wheels, tires, coilovers, and a tune, and some other little things kind of make it a sick daily driver for you guys. Just kind of practical. Every $5 you spent on motionontv.com will give yourself an automatic entry for a chance to win this thing. Uh, we have t-shirts, hoodies, the Boost Weather hoodie is back. We have sunglasses, hats, beanies, stickers, detail products, tons of things. And also, if you guys are on the Patreon, if you're on the, the $20 level or up, you get automatic entries for the months that you're subscribed to during the giveaway so uh yeah be sure to check that out links in the description and uh, some more information but let's get started with today's video so we are uh, we are back to working on uh on the crown vic outside because my brother's still working on his tranny freaking 68 R rfe problems right ronnie boy yep so he's actually had pretty good luck with that but uh, i went ahead and i pulled all the spark plugs out of here and uh was getting is i'm basically getting ready to do a compression test so i just disconnected the injector wires I can't get back in here to show you guys what it looks like in the back cylinder, but the, all these front ones look relatively okay. I don't think I'll be able to zoom in there. Maybe I will. No, I won't be able to get in there. But the back one looks wet, so that's kind of a concern. Uh, on the last engine that we had in here, we basically cracked a ring land on that back cylinder, like this whole one. Uh, so I'm assuming that's probably going to be the, the same situation on this. Um, but we're not gonna know until we do a compression test. So uh, some of the cylinders did look wet on the inside, like like on the, the actual plugs or on the coil boots coming out. So you can see like right here, you can see how ugly those look. And then the tip, kind of like rusty looking because they've been sitting in basically water for a while. Uh, just because I think la last time we might've like hosed it down or did something like that and just kind of left the water in there. So could be another reason why it's doing that. That back cylinder had a little extra, so it wasn't firing the coil. So there's an ex extra fuel in that back cylinder. So uh, I guess we're gonna crank it over real quick uh, with the compression tester in it and see what it does. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with this front cylinder right here. I don't tech know the technical term for this one. This one might be two, it might be four. It doesn't feel like it wants to thread in there nice though, like it should, maybe just cause the angle, kind of a weird angle right here, but. Is upside down for you boys, but so that one is right under 150. All right, run hole two. Could have probably let that one rotate just a little bit more too. And I didn't have my foot on the throttle. Oh yeah, so about five, like rum, 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 five, five of those right at 150. Fifty is the target. This is this is gonna be our. Let's see if this thing's messed up or not. Oh wow! So the, the last one that I thought was bad is right at 150. So that's it's actually good. So we might be. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move to this other side and see how that is. I'm not. I'm just gonna set you guys down for this one, since you know, I don't think it's gonna be too exciting. I'll let you know if anything changes. All right, so a little bit of an update. All 150, 100, maybe 52 and a half or something like that is about uh, about the average. So in the last, uh, on the last side, I actually forgot to pull all the the four spark plugs on this side in, so that's why it sounded like it was like like it's had a big skip in it. So they are uh, all 150 psi of compression. I don't know why it was uh, pressurizing the, you know the basically the coolant hose when you'd rev it like you'd rev it and it would go you know it'd rev up um but i don't know it's just it's kind of one of those things i don't know if it's going to be worth it to like tear this whole thing down but then it's also like a 28 freaking hour drive to florida with this thing you know and hopefully the civic and, and some other stuff but uh yeah it's like i don't want to blow it up on its first run i'd like to be able to do a couple burnouts with it you know and at least have some good fun but yeah it uh i don't know the other thing that i noticed which is weird so this is the first cylinder second third Here's the fourth one. If you look here in the very back, I don't know if, that's, if that'll actually focus. So if you look at this one right here, it's like lean. The very back cylinder was lean, and I believe that was the back cylinder right there. So I think these back two cylinders, maybe it's something to do with the intake manifold. Um, maybe they're just not getting enough fuel, or maybe they're getting too much air or something like that. So I think I'm gonna go into the HP tuners later when I bring my laptop down here and actually turn up the fuel in the back two cylinders. I think I could do that. I don't know, it's not a standalone. Maybe maybe we could, uh, Ty, look, we just do the old D pin <laughs> and we could pin in an ECU master. I mean, that wouldn't be bad. This thing would do what we told it to do. No, HP tuners is fine. Look at that. I mean, all the plugs are right there. Okay. okay, Ty. All right, guys, so day two of messing with the Crown Vic a little bit. Last night we did the compression test. It was about 150 PSI on all cylinders. I gave Ty the SD card and he edited that video, but uh, I think we have a professional. <laughs> I don't today. know about that. But. <laughs> so, uh, so this is my my buddy James. If you guys have seen, I always go to his garage. He doesn't live too far from the shop, and uh, I always test injectors. <laughs> yeah. So he he does a lot of injector. Well, that's not what he does. Uh, his YouTube channel it's Bill Tune Race, and he does a lot of stuff with like Holly EFI. HP tuners and you have some pretty decent like how to's and yeah yeah I try to give some value and let some people learn and pick up what I'm doing but yeah so as you guys know this car is on HP tuners and uh, it's a Ford HP tuner so it's yeah. way different what are, what are your first thoughts on yeah I mean it's just all of them are different GM Ford uh, Dodge they all have different parameters they all read different and this one's being modified for um, blow through on the mass airflow so just trying to figure out parameters we got your O2 sensor hooked up now, and uh, we're gonna go log some air fuel just to see where it's at. Um, you think it's got some hiccups it and some does, leans, it, it some weird, weird things. So now we're gonna go log it so we can actually look back at it and figure it out. But uh, yeah, I've never played with a Ford on HP tuners, so yeah, what a time to learn. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, so his dad has that uh, 65 Buick Skylark that you guys have probably seen on like 1320 video. Uh, James actually tuned that. That thing's probably making how much power? 14, 1500. Yeah, and it did like an eight, like pretty much its first time ever doing. Yeah, so I mean, the goal is to go 200 and a half. We did that on like 28 and a half pounds boost. We went to LS Fest first ever time, like doing drag racing after we did the 200 and a half. And on about 23 pounds of boost, it went 848 at 167. Yeah. So pretty easy. It was pretty lazy, but. Yeah. We got room to go. Yeah. I think it'll go sevens. A goal is like high sevens and a 490 in the eighth. Yeah. So, uh, see, I always kind of bug James about random tuning questions and stuff, um, especially when it comes to like the HP tuner stuff. So he's, we're gonna, like you said, we're gonna go cruise it around, log yep. some things, and just, I, I'd say mostly, what I'm trying to figure out is actually to see if this is a good tuning platform to where if like it actually, yeah, does the right thing. Yeah, so if you can do what you want and kind of grow with it or. Yeah, if like you're painted into a corner with it. Yeah, it depends on you know how much effort I want to put into the setup. I mean, if we could, if it does yeah. what we tell it to do, and it's like, oh, we could do whatever with this. Yeah, and especially if you're wanting to do a lot of burnouts or whatever with it, then it's kind of you just need to get it to that point, and then kind of safely make a little yeah. richer, a little less timing, all that type of stuff, and then it'll do what you want it to do. It's just getting it initially to do that. Yeah, and turn it up past like five pounds of boost. So yeah, so and that's but. some of the things with like the mass airflow. We'll just have to see how much growth you can get yeah. with the, your current setup. So Yeah, well I guess let's go cruise around and see, see how she does. So cruising this thing is thing around a little bit. What do you think, James? 
making a little progress, but it's uh, it's a fun car. Just it's always a uh, headache, I guess, when it doesn't do exactly what you want it to. So yeah. So right now it's kind of creeping up and getting lean uh, when we actually get into boost. And so right now we actually are still on the stock fuel pump, you know, which I think we were kind of able to get away with for a little while. But I mean, it's 80 pound injectors, uh, HPX upgraded MAF. We have all the things around it other than the fuel pump. So I think I have a Dietrichworks 400 that we could slap in there. To I mean, try that, at least, that would yeah. be that'd, that'd be a, a big way dog to go, for sure. But uh, otherwise, what do you think of the? Do you think we could? use this like is yeah it... I've, i mean playing with it enough we'd figure it out for sure yeah um, that's it's just it's not a standalone so the quick uh, adjustments or boost control you don't get any of that with this thing but yeah. as far as just getting it dialed in on boost and on a spring or whatever we should be able to as long as we can get past this little lean issue yeah so i'll show you guys a little bit of that enjoy these turbo noises That's always been my issue with this thing is like you tell it to do this thing and then it does something else and then it does one time and then it does something else a different time and it, yeah that's that's always <laughs> that's been my issue with it is it like sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad sometimes it's lean sometimes it's rich apple look really good like when rice from was doing the burnout like i literally stuck his camera in in here was like looking at the boost gauge it was like you know six pounds and this was pig rich at like nine or ten oh yeah. afr and it's like and like now we're going lean it's but like that pull right there was almost like spot on yeah yeah it was like 12 8 like uh, it looks all like 12 2 12 it, so it's bouncing in there so like yeah. that time it had the fuel and then other times it, it does it's really weird i mean i can do another little one and we can see so we were just talking about fuel pressure uh possibly being an issue we're looking at the data log here and at just kind of cruise and idle we're looking like 40 ish psi of fuel pressure and then as it starts to kind of break up and go lean it starts losing a little bit to like 35. yeah so then uh, so normally you're supposed to gain like for every pound of boost you're supposed to gain a pound of fuel pressure to overcome yeah. the pressure that's actually in the manifolds so this is a weird kind of electronic fuel pressure setup in here to where it's like, literally it's like it, there's a, a connector on the fuel rail so it doesn't actually have a way to like i guess ramp in yeah fuel pressure, so it which, might not be a boost reference which kind of regulator yeah which makes sense but like still if it was 40 and it had good fuel pressure it should hold 40 all the time mm -hmm. by going the other way you'll either see that when like injector you won't because if you have enough fuel pre fuel pump uh and not enough injector like it'll it'll still maintain but when it starts going the other way and you start losing fuel pressure uh fuel pumps will fall off on mm -hmm. the far side when you start running out of fuel pressure so maybe that is an issue yeah so yeah i think we might need to throw a pump in here i think that makes that at makes least sense. you know then maybe it maybe it was good and then it got tired yeah i mean we've done a lot of things with this <laughs> I, to do a I like doing burnouts this thing likes doing burnouts too Like going wide open. If I kind of ease into it, I think it'll do better. Kind of ease into it, let it kind of build a little bit. Then it got lean. But I mean, it's super fat, and then it'll always go lean when it hits the limiter like yeah. that. So it's that's that's always hard to watch that area. But I look, mean, uh, I mean, it's better than it was. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's doing a burnout. I mean, it does really good burnouts. Hey guys, so uh, James went ahead and uh, went home for the night and uh, we did figure out some stuff on it. So one of the things that we're kind of running into is there's not a lot of resolution 
to play with. So right here you can see the mass airflow sensor volts. Kind of when it's doing the hiccup stuff is between like three volts and like 3.6. So that's like four cells uh, of stuff to basically tune. So if you come right here, you have three volts to 3.6 volts and that's kind of the airflow that's in that that sector so it's not like a ve table where kind of when you're getting in and out of boost you basically have like 30 cells in a square to kind of tune literally it's just like a little thing so it's kind of interpolating in between like those those things um but tuning a mass airflow sensor car is uh a lot different i guess when this scale and this is kind of the first one that james is actually kind of messed with but he's done a lot of stuff with uh with hp tuners he's actually going to come over here in a little bit a little bit more today and uh, we're going to kind of go over some things so be sure to look out for that uh video probably tomorrow i'm going to go ahead and install an upgraded fuel pump in here remember every five dollars you spent on motionautv.com is an automatic entry for a chance to win our 2017 wrx and three thousand dollars cash so uh, be sure to go check that out and I uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I think Cletus and Cars is a go. I think if we could get this thing figured out. Yeah, uh, we, we, we it, all, it all came together. Yeah, this all came is, together. Uh, so we, we need, I mean, people have been calling this thing Tricky Vicky. Um, I don't know, I think this is like freaking neighbors like slutty stepsister, you know, some, something like that. I don't know what kind of videos we've been watching. But, uh, <laughs> uh, See you guys later.